So he, we had what they call a cheerleady in the, in the factory where they would have a meeting once a month and anybody had complaints, they would tell them, you know. And whenever the union came in, they would stop production yeah. and I'd let them have a meeting. In other words, I would pay yeah. the girls. Where the other union shops in the Kingston, get the heck out of here, get the, this, you want to pay the girls, go outside, you know. Yeah. So, but with me, yeah. I gave a little bit. Right, and then they gave a little back. You know. Gave a lot back. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so what happened then? They uh, would. Um, uh, so anyway, he he talked to the girls. His name was Julius Sifton, mm -hmm. you know, and he talked to the girls. And he said, "Look, Anthony's having a rough time of it now, but let's see what we can do. Can we help him? I got a suggestion." If you want to keep Anthony in business, uh, we'll help you with the dues and we'll, if you take a cut and pay. Yeah. So there was like uh, about 54 people, girls at the time. And uh, they, uh, they had a meeting. One girl mm. wouldn't do it. Wow. One girl, and uh, so after the meeting, because I couldn't be in the meeting, so after the meeting, Julius came to me and he said to me, well, there's one girl refuses to do it. Yeah. And the girls had a fit. Because they all lived right there, they had no traveling, no this, no right. that. And uh, so the, uh, they, uh, the girls all started, I mean, they were all neighbors, they were all, so anyway, they uh, had a meeting again, and they talked her into doing it. Oh. So uh, they uh, they voted. So we kept working. Yeah. About six months later, things were going good again. They got their money back plus a raise. Wow. You know, wow. so they didn't lose nothing. You know, run, yeah. And in the meantime, they kept me in business. Right. And all the other union shops were closing like crazy. 